of fintech. So fintech is nothing but technology um, that is being used to transform uh, the delivery of financial services and banking services from one end and um, or to um, come up and develop new, more innovative financial products and services. Um, so a fintech really drives a lot of efficiencies, uh, whether it's financial institutions by offering them more efficient um, operational costs, uh, lowering their operational costs, whether it's for end users by providing them with a, with a more enhanced consumer journey, uh, as well as supporting financial inclusion, for example, and supporting regulators like us, the Central Bank of Bahrain, for example, by allowing regulators to have uh, to develop better oversight um, and surveillance of the financial operations using these advanced technologies. When we speak of fintech today, we automatically think about uh, the latest uh, mobile app that allows you to transfer payments electronically or to make digital payments seamlessly. However, um, fintech or technology has always played an important role within the financial services sector, and it really dates back to the 1950s when uh, the credit cards were first um, uh, were first uh, created, um, and that really this uh, it really helped people manage the way that they used to carry cash uh, around with them. And then moving on to 1967, when the first ATM was invented, and that totally disrupted the uh, traditional uh, teller business or the way that um, people used to uh, approach physical branches or approach tellers to uh, withdraw their cashes. Uh, and then we've got uh, from the 1990s where we had the introduction of, of the internet, and then we started seeing e-commerce business really booming. From then, onwards, um, technology has been emerging at a fast pace and really today more than any other time, uh, you know, the pace at which technology is, is evolving is unprecedented. Um, so we've got uh, technology that is developing at a, at a huge pace and which is really having an impact on all sectors of our lives, including the financial services sector. From another end, uh, today we have a growing young population, the millennials, um, and this population segment really has uh, comes along with their specific characteristics and traits. They have their own demands. Uh, they're they're very tech savvy. They're depending on technology in all aspects of their lives, um, including um, accessing financial and banking services uh, digitally. And therefore, all these factors are working together to really disrupt and transform the traditional banking and financial services sector. And this has really pushed regulators around the world to kind of um, play a, a, a new role, uh, an added responsibility to financial regulators, which is to build and foster and grow uh, their fintech ecosystems and to support more innovation within the financial services sector. And being a very proactive regulator in the region, the Central Bank of Bahrain has taken a bold step uh, back in 2017. Uh, we have created um, a dedicated fintech and innovation unit, uh, which is considered the first of its kind in the whole of the region, um, which is tasked mainly with the responsibility for ensuring the growth of a healthy uh, fintech ecosystem within the Kingdom of Bahrain. And now the Fintech and Innovation Unit at the Central Bank of Bahrain, um, uh, I've listed here on the side, you're going to see the list of the responsibilities or the, or the mandates of this unit. But just to make things um, a little bit more easy to understand, within the unit, we focus on three main responsibilities. The first, the first of our responsibility is to ensure uh, that we have the necessary regulations in place, the necessary regulatory foundation in place that will encourage innovation within the financial services sector. So to do that, we engage in a lot of research. Um, we have to keep, um, we have to stay up to date as to the latest developments in, uh, within, within the fintech sector, the latest um, demands coming from consumers um, in order for us to really reform our existing regulations uh, to attract more fintechs to Bahrain and to also allow more collaboration between existing financial institutions and fintechs to drive more innovation and efficiencies within the financial services sector. So that's a huge part of what we do on a day-to-day -day basis, which is researching and um, uh, coming up 
with uh, the necessary regulations by continuously developing our regulatory um, framework. From another end, we're also responsible for uh, supervising the regulatory sandbox. Uh, I'm not going to go into explaining what the regulatory sandbox is because I'll leave that to my colleague Yasmin Janahi, who will be presenting shortly. But our day-to-day -day job at the Fintech and Innovation Unit is also to supervise uh, the regulatory sandbox and to oversee the progress of the companies that are operating within the sandbox. Now, the third pillar of, uh, of what we do um, at the Fintech and Innovation Unit is to collaborate with both um, regional, local, and international stakeholders to ensure that we, that we build uh, a conducive, a complete, comprehensive uh, Fintech ecosystem uh, within Bahrain. Uh, so we work very uh, closely with uh, government as well as other private stakeholders uh, within the kingdom, such as the Economic Development Board from an end. We work very closely with Bahrain Fintech Bay. We also work and engage very closely with the existing banks and financial institutions in Bahrain um, to understand uh, their challenges and to really um, help them and help accelerate uh, the adoption of fintech and financial technology and uh, to foster more innovation within the financial services sector. Um, can, can, I, can we just move to the next slide, please, Badur? Okay, so this slide uh, really shows us the accomplishments of uh, the fintech unit. Since inception, back into in April 2017 up and up until uh, day to day, I'm not going to go through the whole thing, but you know, um, ju I'm just going to highlight some of the major um, accomplishments that we've been able to achieve. We've established the regulatory sandbox, which we are, uh, which is today serving as really a catalyst of innovation for us, for us in Bahrain. Uh, we've come up with a number of different regulations, which my colleagues will then be uh, talking about specifically. Uh, we've embarked on some national projects, for example, the, the EKYC project, which we have worked in, in, in um, collaboration with the benefit company in Bahrain, which is our payment switch and payment gateway of Bahrain. Uh, and that will really foster um, the next generation of onboarding consumers electronically uh, in a seamless manner without the need for these consumers to actually visit physical branches. Um, we've um, entered into different collaborations with different uh, financial institutions, with, with, with different uh, regulators around the world. We've signed MOUs, for example, with the regulator in Singapore, uh, the regulators in, in the UAE, in Egypt. Uh, we are today part of the Global Financial Innovation Network, which is a network that has been set up by the regulator in the UK and comprises of regulators from all around the world uh, allows them to come together and discuss issues related to fintech and innovation and to come up with policy um, recommendations together and uh, governance uh, frameworks um, worldwide. Um, I'll now leave the floor to um, to my colleague Yasmin Janahi. She's going to be walking you through the sandbox, what the sandbox is. She's also going to be talking about the process for applying to the sandbox, and she's also going to give you a glimpse of some of the solutions that we have existing today in the sandbox. Um, Dr. Asra, I don't know, but will we have some time for an open Q&A session at the end of the um, of the uh, presentation? Yeah, yeah. We all need to. Okay, great. So I'll uh, leave the floor to Yasmin Janahi. Thank you for that, Yasmin. Hi, everyone. I'm Yasmin Janahi. I'm going to be giving you guys basically a general overview of our regulatory sandbox in the CBB. So the regulatory sandbox basically acts um, as a virtual space for both CBB licensed entities um, and other firms. So these firms can be both local and foreign, and they can test out their innovative fintech solutions within the markets here. So um, our regulatory sandbox framework was established in May 2017, as Yasmin had mentioned, um, and it is overseen by our team, the CBB's FinTech and Innovation Unit. In June 2017, we established our regulatory sandbox committee. So um, basically, when a firm applies to be part of the sandbox, the application will go through the CBB's licensing team. Um, this application is online and can be found on the CBB's website. After the application is reviewed by the licensing team, it will go to the regular sandbox committee. And um, this is in order for us to be able to um, create a formal decision 
and reach a formal decision as to whether this sandbox company is going to be approved or not. So this committee will approve admission into the regular sandbox. So the application process takes basically 15 calendar days, um, and that's with all the relevant documentation being received. Um, once the decision is reached, uh, the, we'll send a letter out to the applicant. Um, if approved, the CBB tends to place um, certain thresholds on the applicant. Um, these thresholds tend to be either um, involving transaction or co volunteer customer size. Usually we prefer that the sandbox participants do not exceed 100 volunteer customers. So um, once the sandbox company is officially a participant of the regulatory sandbox, the testing process begins. Um, it's a duration of 9 to 12 months. During those 9 to 12, mo 9 to 12 months, the, the sandbox participants must provide the CBB's FinTech and Innov Innovation Units with monthly progress reports and updates. So these progress reports basically touch upon their relevant KPIs, um, key milestones achieved, number and volume of transactions reached, um, and any challenges they're facing in general we'd like to know about. Um, we have a full list of what they should report to us on our website as well. So um, when the sandbox participant has finished testing and is ready to graduate, they're required to turn in two reports. So one of them is a report prepared by an independent consultant. Uh, of course, this consultant must be approved by the CBB prior to submitting this report. Um, it's basically the report entails details of the founders, explanations of the business model, whether KPIs were met or not, key findings, and basically the results of the testing. Um, the other report that needs to be submitted is a management report. And this needs to be signed by the management of the um, regulatory sandbox participant. This report includes um, also a description of the business model, KYC processes, um, revenue drivers, and technology infrastructure, and there's more. Details on what should be provided in both reports, of course, can be found on our website. Um, so these two reports will be reviewed by our team, the FinTech and Innovation Unit, and other relevant supervision teams that might have to supervise this participant solution if they are to receive a license. Um, I just want to say it's important to note that not all regulatory sandbox participants will receive a license. So um, after they graduate and they're approved to graduate, they'll receive an official graduation letter, um, and this is signed by the governor. So depending on the outcome, they may apply for a license. Um, it's also important to note that even if they graduate, they might not receive a license. This is really depending on what we can license as the CBB and what our market can take at the moment. So um, I'm just going to go to the next slide now. So, um, so basically, currently we've received 80 applications to date. The licensing unit has received 80 applications to the regulatory sandbox up to date. Um, currently, we have 30 companies testing in the regulatory sandbox. So um, as of July, we've had six companies successfully complete testing within the sandbox. We've had Tarabot Gateway, which you might know of, Rain Management, Belfrix, Arabian Chain, Basket SBC, and Sprinkle Exchange. So two of these companies have received a license and they're Terabot Gateway, which has received an AIS PPISP um, license under open banking and Rain Management, which received a crypto asset under the category three license. I'm just gonna head to the next slide. So um, as you can tell, this is our regulatory sandbox composition. Um, as you can tell, crypto, crypto exchanges comprise most of the sandbox. Um, they take up 27%. But, but um, as you can see, it is a diverse sandbox, and we're proud to say that it's diverse um, since we have an insure tech solution company, Braxton Corporate Services Provider, which is currently testing, as well as open banking solutions and robo advisors. Um, I personally believe that it is beneficial for us to have a diverse composition because we as regulators can truly get to learn from these different solutions and gain knowledge about the global fintech, fintech scene, um, given that not all of these companies are local companies. Um, as regulators, this helps us gain knowledge about um, what solutions can benefit the Bahraini markets and basically improve on our fintech ecosystem as a whole. And now we'll move on to my colleague, Bidur al Uh, hi everyone, sorry I was just on mute. Um, 
Uh, my name is Bidur and I'm part of the CBB FinTech unit. Thanks, Yasmin, for the introduction. Uh, so we've introduced a number of regulations uh, pertaining to FinTech. We work hand in hand with the policy unit at the CBB and the licensing team to basically um, either amend our existing regulations or come up with new ones uh, to further foster more um, innovation in the, uh, in the sector. So one of our uh, first and most um, notable regulations that we've introduced was uh, crowdfunding. Crowdfunding is basically um, a way for us to help small to medium enterprises raise necessary capital um, to be able to um, uh, fund their ventures. So it's basically done usually through a platform, completely online, and the types of businesses, uh, the types of crowdfunding that we support or regulate is person to business and business to business. And it has to be financing based or equity based. So an example of crowdfunding platform would be Kickstarter Indiegogo. Um, another example that you might be familiar with, but that's the type of example that we don't actually regulate would be a GoFundMe page. That's more person to person focused. Um, another regulation that we've introduced is digital financial advice, which is basically um, the same thing as robo advisory. It basically um, replaces the traditional financial advisor whereby you'd be able to invest um, a specific amount, let's say $100 into a diversified portfolio, and that would happen automatically. So the way it would usually work is that um, you would um, deposit an amount and you take a small quiz that would, that would basically determine what kind of investor you are, if you're more aggressive or, or if you're a safer investor. And it would invest that amount into several different options or stocks uh, whatever is available in that portfolio, and uh, you'd be able to generate returns. Um, another set is the ins insurance aggregator. The insurance aggregators basically um, would help you as a customer choose between dif uh, different providers of insurance and different plans. It basically helps you, um, helps educate um, the average consumer about what is available in the market. Uh, that way, um, companies are less able to actually um, uh, give uh, basic uh, would be able to give more competitive um, prices to their com uh, consumers. Um, open banking is actually one of our most important um, fintech regulations that we've introduced. Um, it was introduced in December of 2018, and um, up, uh, the, the banks uh, had to comply by this regulation uh, in June of last year. And we were first in the region to actually impose the regulation. And what open banking is essentially is basically um, it is a, a rule that mandates banks to uh, open up to fintechs. So banks um, have to. Uh, uh, in terms of banks, we're talking about retail banks here, not wholesale yet. Uh, retail banks will have to comply and speak to fintechs if fintechs are licensed by the CBB and, are, uh, and would require to communicate with the banks to get information from them. And this communication would happen through APIs, which is application program inter interfaces. And it's basically um, just the language that is used uh, to, for banks to speak to those fintechs. Um, one of our uh, companies that graduated from the sandbox, Tarabot Gateway, is an open banking platform. Um, and the last regulation that we have is uh, crypto assets. I'm sure a, lo a lot of you are familiar with that. Uh, we chose to um, basically uh, regulate crypto asset platforms, which includes exchanges such as Binance. Um, the one we have in Bahrain, if you are all familiar with it, is Rain Financial also graduate um, from the sandbox. And we've chosen to go with uh, terming it as crypto asset rather than cryptocurrencies. It's because the central bank actually does not um, uh, identify uh, cryptocurrencies as legal tender. So you're not allowed to buy an item uh, through Bitcoin or Ethereum and, and so on, but you're allowed to um, exchange those as assets through RAIN, for example, because they are licensed in Bahrain. 
And that's pretty much it in terms of regulations. Um, we continue to develop our regulations to, to further amend them even after introducing them. And we continue to conduct a lot of research in the market to see how we can um, make it a more enabling and innovative market to attract more fintechs in, into the country and also to, um, I guess, inspire others here to work on on uh, startups and potentially get them licensed by the CBB. Thank you.